I am Marie Globofo, and this is Uncommon. This week, dozens of nurses took to the streets in protest demanding an increase in salaries, risk allowances, and other benefits. They were also demanding adequate supplies of personal protective equipment as they claim the hospitals are not giving them enough. First, the protest started on Wednesday in Linden, followed by nurses across West Dam on Thursday, and finally this morning where at least 100 nurses from the Georgetown Public Hospital staged a protest right outside the facility. In response, Dr. Frank Anthony asked for their patience as the budget was voted on today and some 150 million Guiana dollars have been allocated for risk allowances as for the protective equipment, he said each hospital should have an adequate stock already. If you ask me, if those nurses want to be taken seriously, they need to create a union. I mean, come on, if the sugar workers can down tools every other week and get a bailout, why can't the frontline workers? And speaking of sugar workers, Octane CEO of Gaisuko says Nine Singh says at least 442 of the 6,500 sugar workers who were laid off in 2017 will be rehired before year's end. Gaisuko has already rehired two of them, in fact. Nevertheless, the modernization process will reduce the overall number of workers needed for the industry down to just 3,500. Of the 3 billion going to this monumental political waste, $2.2 billion will be invested into progressively reopening the three sugar estates over a number of years. The remaining $800 million will go towards the currently operating three estates. Over 100 witnesses are expected to testify in the trial against Spreadsheet Mingo, who faces several charges of fraud and misconduct in public office in relation to the March 2nd elections. This morning, Mingo made another appearance before the chief magistrate where the prosecution gave a partial disclosure of statements. Mingo's attorney, Nigel Hughes, objected on the basis that he wanted to know if the police were bringing any more charges against Mingo. The file is incomplete, so the prosecution did not disclose such info. But he did say at least 100 people, so far, have come together to testify against Mingo. He's expected back in court December 15th. Over at Triple B's, they sell products that solve problems. This portable folding iron, for example. Say goodbye to them wrinkles. No, not the ones on your face. You'll need Jesus for that. I'm talking about the wrinkles on your clothes. Corn. Call Triple B's on telephone number 682-8326 or visit them on Facebook. Triple B's Enterprise. Remember the name. On Wednesday. A Venezuelan gang shot at a joint patrol of Guyanese police and soldiers on the Cayuni River. According to the GDF, the gunfire, which came from the Venezuelan side of the river, did not injure any of the ranks. Nonetheless, they did shoot back, but they did not confirm if they actually hit anyone. This is just the latest in decades of attacks from the Venezuelans on residents and miners in the area. In fact, within months of independence, the Venezuelans invaded the Guyanese side of Ancoco Island on the Cayuni River in 1966. They still occupy the island to this day. Less than a day after escaping from Lusignan prison, 23-year-old Leroy Grum was recaptured. According to police, this genius went back to his home village of Boxton, but decided to hide out in an abandoned shack in the Bucklands. But clearly seeing that a known fugitive is back in the neighborhood, the people of Buxton snitched on him for the good of the community. He was found around 7 p.m. last night and transported back to the prison. A possibly decades-long feud between two brothers in Den Armster, West Coast, ended in bloodshed last night after one of the brothers allegedly died during a drunken scuffle between the two of them. 55-year-old Wilston Jordan and his 65-year-old brother were drinking last night when they got into a disagreement. The younger Jordan attempted to leave when his older brother came after him and latched onto him for some reason. Jordan then held on to a gate to try to pull himself away. Jordan's hands eventually slipped from the gate and his brother then pushed him down. He drunkenly fell flat on his face onto the road surface, knocking him out cold. Then, from what witnesses say, the brother dragged him into a trench in a poorly misguided attempt to wake him up, but he never did. The elder brother is currently in police custody. Last evening, 20-year-old police constable Marcos Richmond 
was stopped twice after he attempted to break up a fight in Bedevoaktin. Richmond was walking home when he saw two men in an altercation. Being a good police officer, he attempted to intervene, even though he was off duty. But one of the men told him to leave and mind his own business. So, mind his own business he did and continued to walk home. But the same suspect then ran upon Richmond and stabbed him in the buck. Twice. He is currently at the hospital in a serious but stable condition, while the suspect is currently in police custody. The M Soap is Guiana's number one auto dealer. They bring fresh stocks every week and cater for both the rich man and the poor man. Visit them at Lot 9 Crawl Street, Georgetown tomorrow and tell them Noriko sent you to find out about their special offer this week or call them on telephone number 231-8451. BM Soap Auto Sales, it's your turn to drive. Now, let's take a look at news in the region and around the world. We aren't the only ones who are mad at the CXC. Grenada is too, and now Trinidad and Tobago. In fact, Education Minister for Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Nayan Gadsby Dolly, has assured that her ministry will take all required steps to ensure that the issue is adequately addressed, just like what Minister Monikchan said over here. Anyway, she too has already contacted the CXC headquarters, demanding an explanation. So clearly this is going to be a developing regional issue that we will update with more info as details arise. The Cayman Islands are preparing to kick out people who overstayed their visas due to the Rona and its flight restrictions. The overstay amnesty that was granted to visitors who overstayed due to the Rona and work permit holders who lost their job due to the pandemic, all those protections will come to an end on October 31st. Customs and Border Control and Workforce Opportunities and Residency Cayman, wow, what's a long name, anyway, this organization are encouraging persons who have overstayed due to COVID-19 to take the necessary steps to get regularized before it ends. On Thursday, Republican lawmakers published an open letter claiming that El Salvador's government is legitimizing the MS-13 street gang. According to reports, El Salvador's president, Nayab Berkele, is currently in a negotiation process with the gang. The U.S. congressman also rejected the use of military troops to intimidate El Salvador's legislative assembly. Don't fall for these get-rich-quick schemes, people. There is a legit way you can earn some extra cash to supplement your existing hustle. Sell top-up. You could become a top-up vendor quick and easy by linking Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 685-3109 for more info. And now for our weird news story of the day. Are you a tree-loving environmentalist with about 10 hours to spare? If so, then you could break a world record for tree-hugging. A Tennessee woman broke a Guinness world record by hugging a tree in a Chattanooga park for about 10 hours and 5 minutes. Adrian Long spent 10 hours 5 minutes with her arms wrapped around a walnut tree to break the previous tree hogging record, which stood at 8 hours and 15 minutes. The attempt was live streamed on the World Record Tree Hogging page on Facebook, and she actually did it for good cause. Long's feet raised money for a local environmental NGO in her state. Moving on to our uncut news viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guyana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your responses in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, how do you feel about the whole drama over at the CXC? Clint Brummel said, CXC should give Ministry of Education to review all. Sharon Kahn said, same thing they did to my son a few years back, and I had to send him to write back at Global Technology, where he gets his grades right. So Sharon is saying this might have been something that's been going on for years. Oh my. And Andre Anthony says, CXC took a page out of Guiana vote counts for irregularities. I wonder if Mingo Bingo was there marking the papers. Aha! Good question, Andre. I have no idea. Good answers, people. So tonight I leave you with this question. The nation's nurses are protesting for better pay and working conditions. Do you agree with their decision to protest? Why or why not? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. 
Until next time, I'm Norik Cobalford saying, have a great weekend. And as always, don't drink and drive, or you'll end up on Monday's episode the hard way. Ha <laughs> ha! Good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!